The final part of our introduction to the normal distribution has us looking at word problems. When we do these word problems, we're going to need to first look at the prompt, pick out what's the mean, what's the standard deviation, and what's the uh, data point of interest. Basically, we need to identify x, mu, and sigma. Once we've identified them, we can then move to where we put them into the z-score formula to find a z-score. Once we have that z-score, we can use the table to translate that z-score to a probability. Finally, we'll have to think about what type of question we're asked to see whether we can just use that table value, whether we have to do 1 minus that table value, or whether we have to subtract the difference between two table values. So there's three different skills being used here. The first skill is picking out the important information from a prompt that's in uh, a word problem. The second skill is converting that information to a z-score using the z-score formula. The third skill is using the table to convert a z-score to a probability. And the fourth skill is figuring out how to use that table probability to find the probability the question's asking for. So what I usually say is this is like moving between worlds. A lot of times students get stuck in one to the next where they can pull out the key information, they can solve for the z-score, but then they accidentally use the z-score as the probability instead of looking it up properly in the table. Or perhaps students jump right to thinking that the mean that they're given is a z-score, try and look it up in the table when it really hasn't gone through that second part of the process. So it's very important to go step by step, move between worlds where you start with the word problem, move it to the world of a z-score, move it to the world of a probability, and do each step in the proper order. So I like to begin with thinking about a question that I've asked at the start of the class, if we wanted to find the average height of a matter student or a college student, depending upon our population. So let's say I that I know that the mean height of a manor student is 68 inches tall with a standard deviation of 4 inches. If I'm asked, what's the probability a randomly selected manor student is less than 63 inches tall? Basically, I've been given all the information I need. 68 is the mean or mu, sigma or the standard deviation is 4, and this 63 is the x value or data point that I want to interpret. So I have x, I have mu, and I have sigma. I can put them all into my z-score formula. Once I use the z-score formula, then I can translate this into negative 1.25 as a z-score, telling me that I'm 1.25 standard deviations below the mean. But that doesn't really tell me the probability. To do that, I need to go to my chart, make sure I'm on the side that's negative, go down to negative 1.2. Once I've identified the row that's negative 1.2, go over to 0 0.05. When I line that up in my table, I should get what I get up there, which is a p-value of 0 0.1056. So now I've gone from a prompt that was written as a word problem to a z-score to a probability. I need to look back and say, did it ask me for less than to the left of more than to the right of, or between two values. Since it asked me to find less than 63 inches tall, I can use the exact table value. 0.1056 as a probability really means 10.56% of students are less than 63 inches tall, provided that I have the proper mean and standard deviation of 68 inches and 4 inches. So, Let's say that cars in the Manor parking lot have a mean age of seven years with a standard deviation of three years. Find the probability that a randomly selected car is less than nine years old, is more than six years old, or is between six and nine years old. As always, I think it's better if you pause at this point before I show you the answers to see if you can try these problems on your own. If we were in class, I'd give you a moment to attempt them. If I'm trying to do less than 9, I take 9, the, very, the x value they're interested in, I subtract the 7, which was the given mean in the prompt. After that subtraction gets me negative 2, I then, or I'm sorry, gets me positive 2, I then divide by the 3, which was given as the standard deviation. 2 divided by 3 is 0.666 repeating. I round it to two decimal places, 0.67, and I look up 0.67 in the table. 
On the positive side, I go down to the row 0 0.6, and I go over to the column 0.07. It tells me it has a p-value of 0.7486. Because I was asked less than nine years old, that's exactly what the table tells me, and I can just report this probability. So 0.7486 is the final answer for less than nine years old. For the second question, more than six years old. Again, I first calculate the z-score by taking the, the value of interest 6 minus the given mean 7. That answer is a negative 1, which is then divided by the standard deviation of 3 to get a z-score of negative 0 0.33. On the negative side, I go down to the row, negative 0 0.3, over to the column, 0.03. And when I line them up, I get 0.3707. That really tells me the percent of cars that are less than six years old. But the question wanted more than six. So in order to accommodate for that, I need to do one minus the table value, or 100% of the values minus the percent that fall to the left. So since the table value was 0 0.3707, when we do one minus 0 0.3707, we arrive at our correct answer, 0.6293. For problem three, the good news is we already found z-scores for both the ones in question. So for both six and nine years old, we found z-scores. For nine, we found 0.67, which had a p-value of 0.7468. For six, we found a z-score of negative 0.33, which had a p-value of 0.307. So if we're looking for the probability between these two, we're just going to take the larger p-value, 0.7486, minus the smaller p-value, 0.3707. When I do that math, 0.7486 minus 0.3707 gives me 0.3779. Meaning, based on this information, if the true mean of the age of cars was seven years and the true standard deviation was three years, then we'd expect 37.79% of the cars on campus to be between six and nine years old. This is a new prompt where we're told the mean amount of time someone spent at the art fair was 51 minutes with a standard deviation of 16 minutes. Find the probability that a randomly selected person at the art fair stayed less than 30 minutes, more than 60 minutes, between 30 and 60 minutes, or less than 30 minutes or more than 60 minutes. So we're going to start off with less than 30 by putting into the z-score formula 30 minus the given mean of 51, divided by the given standard deviation of 16. We're then going to do it for 60. The between question you know how to do. The less than 30 or more than 60, we're going to see we can get to either by adding the first two answers or by doing one minus the third answer. Again, I would pause here. Try this on your own. Unpause. For less than 30, I get a z-score. 30 minus the mean of 51 over 16 gives me negative 1.31. The p-value, 0.0951, that I look up is exactly the correct answer because I wanted less than 30. For more than 60, I put it into the formula. I find out it has a z-score of 0 0.56, which has a p-value of 0.7123. Since a more than question is 1 minus the table value, I do 1 minus 0.7123 to get my final answer of 0.2877 for the probability it's more than 60 minutes they stay at the art fair. When I'm looking for between 30 and 60, I take the larger p-value that I found, 0.7123. Notice I'm using what the table value was, not the result of my subtraction. I then subtract from that the smaller p-value, 0.0951. When I do that, 0.7123 minus 0.0951 gets me to my final answer, 0.6172. When I'm asked less than 30 or more than 60, I either can see it as combining the two things we found in parts 1 and 2. So part 1, we found 0.9051, or 0.0951, sorry. Part 2, we found 0.2877. If I add these two together, I get 0.3828 as the area less than the smaller number 30 or more than the larger number 60. The other way to get there is to see that, well, that includes everything except for the area between the two. 
So in problem three, we found between the two was 0.6172. If all we did was take 100% of the values minus that 0.6172, that would get us to the same answer of 0.3828.